I am so glad you're here because today we're learning all about diazonium salts. Aryl diazonium salts are incredibly useful for organic synthesis. They are synthesized through a process called diazotization, which involves the conversion of primary aromatic amines to diazonium salts. This reaction is typically achieved by treating the aromatic amine with nitrous acid or a nitrite salt under acidic conditions. The reason that these aryl diazonium salts are so incredibly powerful are because they can be derivatized by exchanging the functional group of the diazonium salt. One of the most popular reactions for this are called Sandmeyer reactions, where you take copper salts, like for example copper chloride, and you can exchange the substituent to a chloride from the diazonium salt. Similarly, we can do this for copper iodide and copper bromide to generate the new aryl halide species in exchange for the diazonium salt. The Sandmeyer reaction also works for cyanide. So you can use copper cyanide to exchange this position for a new cyano group. And importantly, remember that we have already learned about reactions where you can transform cyano groups into, for example, carboxylic acids through oxidation. So this is a powerful way to install brand new functional groups along an aryl compound. There are other examples as well that are incredibly powerful. One of those such examples are fluorination, where you can actually exchange the diazonium salt for a fluoride. Another example that I want you to consider that may seem relatively simple or straightforward is going to be reduction. Through adding something like phosphoric acid, we can actually exchange that diazonium salt for just a simple hydrogen. And I want you to keep that one in mind because we can actually use diazonium salts to direct functional groups and direct synthesis and then subsequently reduce the diazonium salt to get rid of it. So it may be a powerful way for you to utilize this tool in organic synthesis. And then the final example that I want you to consider is the fact that we can exchange this diazonium salt for an alcohol. And we do this by using the conditions of using sulfuric acid, H2SO4, in water with a little bit of heat, which I'll indicate with the delta symbol. So as you can see, these diazonium salts are so useful because they allow us to transform these aryl compounds into effectively anything we want. Let's walk through a multi-step synthesis where we utilize directing effects, electrophilic aromatic substitution, and our newly learned information about diazonium salts to perform this multi-step synthesis. For the first reaction, I see that I'm using nitrous acid in the presence of another strong acid in the presence of a benzene ring. And this is an example of adding a nitro group to a benzene. So once I have done this, I can place my nitro group at this at any one of the positions because they're all identical. And from here, one of the reactions that we've learned about is how you can reduce this nitro group by using something like iron in the presence of water and a strong base. And AOH, for example, and this will allow me to generate a new primary amine. In fact, I have now synthesized aniline. And from here, I can do a multitude of different reactions. And let's say, for example, that I wanted to do a bromination. I know that if I add bromine, that I can do an electrophilic aromatic substitution to add bromine to this molecule. I can consider the fact that since nitrogen has a lone pair, it's going to be pi donating. This is going to make it an ortho para director. So, for example, at each of the ortho positions and at the para position, I can add a bromine substituent at each of those positions. So if in fact that's exactly what we do, I see that I have now placed on three different bromo substituents at both ortho positions and the para position. And then from here what I can do is turn this primary amine into a diazonium salt using the information that we just learned. So NaNO2 in the presence of a strong acid, so hydrochloric acid, for example, will allow us to generate that diazonium salt. So once I have generated my di diazonium salt in place of that primary amine, I'm still left with my three bromine substituents. And now from here, one of the reactions that I learned about is actually reduction. So in the presence of phosphoric acid, I will reduce this diazonium salt to just a carbon hydrogen bond, which means that now I have generated a molecule that contains three different bromine atoms. And this is my final product. And again, if I was 
seeking out to generate this molecule, this would be the most efficient pathway by utilizing all the different reactions that we've learned, particularly this new reaction where we utilize the diazonium salt to either be a directing group and then to further functionalize our molecule. Now let's put it all together and try some practice problems. On the screen, you're going to see a problem, and I would like for you to pause the video and try it on your own. Then resume the video and check back for my explanation. The first reaction is what this video is all about, and that's turning primary amines into diazonium salts. I know that in the presence of sodium nitrite and a strong acid that we can successfully convert a primary amine into a diazonium salt. And it's a diazonium salt because we have now that chloride ion there making this a salt. The next step is going to be what's called the Sandmeyer reaction. So anytime you have a copper salt like copper iodide, copper halide, copper bromide, or copper cyanide, we can actually exchange that diazonium salt for the anion portion of our copper salt. And this would allow us to generate a molecule like this one, which now has replaced that diazonium salt with a cyano group. Now going in the downward direction, you were told that you added HBF4. And this presents an intermediate where you exchange the ions in this reaction. It's called a salt metathesis reaction. Where now, instead of having the halide be the chloride, which was initially our diazonium salt, what you have generated instead is the counter ion is going to be a fluoride. And then from there, in the presence of heat, so delta means heat. This is actually going to take this halide and allow it to attack at this position and kick off the diazonium salt, which is a great leaving group, leaving behind a new aryl fluoride. So this is the way that we actually generate fluorides from diazonium salts. I hope that you learned today that diazonium salts can be incredibly powerful for organic synthesis. If you learned something, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel for more chemistry content, and if you have any questions about this material or anything else related to chemistry, make sure you drop it as a comment down below, and I'd be happy to help you out. I'll see you in the next video.